Hey guys, Shane here with eTour.com. Today I have a 2020 Chrysler Pacifica, and I want to walk you through how to install the Kurt Class 3 trailer hitch receiver. Adding a Class 3 hitch to your vehicle is going to give you a lot of different options. Whether that's pulling a small trailer, maybe putting a cargo carrier on her to make more room inside for passengers, or maybe you want to put some bikes on so you don't have to load them inside the vehicle. It's going to have a round tube design. It's going to stay nice and tucked up close to the bottom of our underneath panel. Round tube design is going to make it fit nicely with the contour of the vehicle. It's going to have a black, gloss black powder coat finish. It's really going to help resist any rust or corrosion. You're going to have a two inch by two inch receiver tube opening. Reinforced collar to give us a little extra stability there. Hitch pin hole is going to be five eighths inch in diameter. It's going to take a standard five eighths hitch pin. Hitch pin and clip does not come with this hitch, however, it can be found here at eTrailer.com. Safety chain loops is going to be plate style, it's welded on the bottom of the receiver tube. You can see we have very large openings to accommodate different size safety chain hooks. Now let me give you a few measurements to help you when deciding on any of your hitch mount accessories you may need, such as a bike rack, a ball mount, or cargo carrier. From the center of our hitch pin hole to the outermost part of our bumper is going to be about 5 inches. The number is important for any of your hitch mount accessories that may fold up against your vehicle. You want to make sure they're not going to make contact with the bumper. From the ground to the top innermost part of the receiver tube, it's about 13 inches. That number is important for any of your hitch mount accessories that may require a little bit more ground clearance. As far as our weight capacities go, we're going to have a 400 pound max tongue weight, which is a downward pressure on the inside of the receiver tube. 4,000 pound gross trailer weight, which is a trailer plus a load included. I always recommend checking the owner's manual of the vehicle. Make sure the vehicle can withstand that amount of weight. You're going to go with the lowest number between the vehicle and the hitch. You can use weight distribution with this hitch. Tongue weight's going to go up to 500 pounds. Trailer weight's going to go up to 5,000 pounds. Overall, I really like the way this hitch looks on this vehicle. Having the two inch by two inch receiver tube opening being in class three hitch, it really gives you a lot of options for different hitch mount accessories. Having a 400 pound max tongue weight also makes it great for like wheelchair carriers. Now that we've gone over some of the features, let's walk you through how to get it installed. Starter installation, you're going to need a 10 millimeter socket and an 8 millimeter socket. We're going to first remove the underbody panel if you have one. We're going to have 8 millimeter bolts that run across the back. We're going to have a couple of 10 millimeter that run along the inside here. We'll start with the inside with a 10 millimeter socket. Along our driver's side panel, quarter panel here, we'll start removing our 8 millimeter heads, bolts. On the driver's side, behind your tire, where your panel hits your fender liner, there's going to be two 8 millimeter bolts inside here we need to remove. Then I found another one right behind the tire, right here. This panel wraps down and underneath, so we need to take off this inside one. And we'll have two more 10 millimeter plastic nuts right here. We're going to take a large screwdriver. We're going to take this attachment point knot right here. You kind of pull down on it as you're undoing it. Put a little bit of pressure on that. It'll come off a little bit easier, just like that. Then we'll have one more fastener right here. We'll use our flathead screwdriver to remove that one. Then we need to lower our exhaust. We're going to have a rubber hanger here in the back and then one up towards the rear axle. Take some soapy water. We're going to spray down the hanger. Then we're going to take a pry bar and we'll work it off at the end. Then we're going to repeat the process for the second one. Next, we need to remove our heat shield and trim it. We're going to take a 10 millimeter socket. We're going to have a plastic fastener here. And we're going to have one 
right up here. Next we need to cut out our heat shield. If you notice how I'm holding it here, we're gonna cut this part off, which is touching our frame rail. Directions are gonna tell you to go five inches up, 10 inches. What we really need to do is I'm gonna cut it right along just above where that rolls right there. This is the only thing that covers that frame rail. So that's what I'm gonna cut off. I'm gonna use aviation shears to cut it off. And we can reinstall our heat shield. For hybrid models, your emissions canister on your driver's side, we need to temporarily remove that. We'll use a 10 millimeter socket. We're gonna have a bolt here on the back side and one on the front. We're gonna let our canister hang, kind of like that, for now. On the driver's side, we're gonna have a ground wire. Take a 10 millimeter socket, we need to remove that nut and we're going to end up relocating the ground wire somewhere else. On our driver's side, we're going to take our pull wire. We're going to go through this very back hole here. What we want to do is we want to push that over along this outside edge. There's actually a wall that goes in right here, and it makes it hard to get your hardware through there. We want to feed this through, and we want to come out this hole. Once you got it through, make sure you got it on the outside of that wall. Feed the spacer block on. Go ahead and push it inside the hole. Take a carriage bolt, we're going to thread it onto the end of the spring. We can feed our bolt inside. We'll pull it down just like that. For this hole, we're going to do a reverse pull. We'll attach our hardware to our wire, put the head of our bolt up first, then our spacer block, and pull it back down. Spacer block. Thread your bolt on your wire. Head the bolt first. Then your space block and pull back down. For our passenger side, we're actually going to be using three holes. We're going to be using this one, this one, and this one here. You're going to use the same techniques with the pull wire. Start at your very back hole, the smallest. Come to the front one and work your way forward, toward, forward towards the front of the vehicle. Next, with an extra set of hands, we're going to go to hitch into place. We're going to start on the passenger side so we can go over the exhaust. Once we get that side over our exhaust, get your pull wires through your corresponding holes in the hitch. For the back one here, there's two holes. We want to go in the very back hole. Then we can remove our pull wire, put on a flange nut. And with a three quarter inch socket, we're going to come back, we're going to tighten our hardware and then torque it to the specifications and the instructions. So the directions we're gonna tell you to use, uh, there's a long bolt that comes in the kit to put your canister back in place, but they're not really clear on how to do it. We're finding that it's hitting the factory bolt here and we're not gonna be able to get our bolt back in the front. So we're gonna take this bracket off and we're gonna modify it so we can get our canister put back in with both bolts. To take it off, you take a 10 millimeter socket and wrench the head of the bolt sits right up inside here. The bolt's gonna come down 
with the nut side. You're going to have one on the back here and one on the front. Once you get those off, take this bracket off and then we can get it modified. I'm just going to use a rotary tool with a plastic cutting blade to trim this out. Now that we got it trimmed out, we can take our factory bolt, put it back into place in the front hole, the one closest to the tire here. And then for our back hole, the kit's going to come with a longer bolt. We use that one right in here. You're going to have a small bolt and nut in your kit. We're going to take our ground wire and we're going to attach it right here. Then we can take an 11 millimeter socket and wrench and we'll tighten the nut and bolt. Next, we can reinstall our exhaust, reverse order from the way you took it off. So now before we put our underbody panel back in place, we need to trim it. They're gonna say to go six inches over from the center of this hole. Uh, you can see I marked it once. I've got it set up in place here and it's way off. So I'm actually, the reason I have it up here so I can line it up where the hitch is, and I marked it in this spot. Now we'll come, we'll take it back down and mark this 10 inches back and make it just wide enough so we can fit it around the side plate of our hitch. This is just cardboard, so I'm just gonna use a utility knife to cut this out. So I'm about to trim a little bit farther back here to get my panel to go to slide up in place. Once you've got it trimmed out, you can go ahead and reinstall all of your hardware for your bottom panels. Once you've got all your hardware put back in place, you're ready to go. That's gonna do it for a look at and installation on the Kurt Class 3 trailer hitch receiver on your 2020 Chrysler Pacifica.